I've talked about the beauty of utang na loob. This is a Filipino core value. But any core value used in the extreme or activated from a place of fear, no matter how good your intention is, can bring about the shadow side or collectively the toxic side of the Filipino culture. In today's episode, let's talk further about utang na loob and what's wrong about being grateful. Are Filipinos truly bilingual? We use the same language at home but speak in love languages foreign to each other, together but separated. Kamusta? I'm Rowan, licensed psychotherapist mom, immigrant twice, first-generation Pinay raising my mixed Filipino-American children in America. I found that after visiting 500 Filipino homes, I continued to be a student of the culture. In this podcast, we would be seatmates in this beautiful cultural classroom. And by the way, did I tell you I need my kaping barako straight from Batangas before each class? If you're interested in learning the deep intricacies of the Filipino culture, especially as it merged with American culture, talks about trauma-informed care and deepening your Filipino relationships across generations, which includes my fave topic, Pinoy Love Languages, you're in the right place. This episode is brought to you by the Inner Child Playground 30 Days to Restoration course. This course gives you 30 days prompt to unleash your inner child and nurture it playfully. It is anchored in using creative expression like journaling, collaging, and attuning to your body. And best of all, you don't have to be an artist because I'm not. So check the show notes for the link. Friends, I want to welcome you to another episode of the Pinoy Love Language Podcast. This is your host, Rowan. So Today's episode, we would be talking about utang na loob and what's wrong about being grateful. Now, I want to share with you that I have talked about introduction of utang na loob in episode 8. If you haven't taken a listen to that episode, go ahead and listen to that first. Also, if you haven't checked out, there is a blog post on utang na loob. With that, it also has a short video that I created. In addition, I was a guest for NPR's National Public Radio. It's called Code Switch. I was a guest together with Dr. EJ David. So don't worry, I am going to leave all the links in the show notes. First of all, it is a wonderful trait for you to have a grateful heart you know we often one of the things that we teach our children is to say thank you or say please you know like we say okay what do you say after someone gave you a, a piece of food thank you it is also embedded in the filipino culture especially when we talk about kapwa psychology which simply means i see you in me and i in you that this teaching that if you think you were successful by your own accord, the you know this uh, metaphor of crabs pulling each other is a reminder that you weren't able to reach the top of the hill on your own accord. So this is a combination of both honoring those who have helped you this utang na loob, and also a reminder that no man is an island, that we are all connected to not forget that. I think that's a great practice. But today, we would be talking about one of the things that could be an issue, using gratitude as a guise, is when it's used to bypass, repress emotions. What I mean by this is when children are trying to express negative quote-unquote emotions or they're simply emotions that we deem to be negative or emotions that we as an adult could not handle ourselves. And that's the only reason that it becomes a negative. It's because of our own 
projection. And so, a parent might say, Nako, magpasalamat ka na nga lang. Just be thankful without processing or at least acknowledging that something was hurtful, painful for the child. And so, these types of emotions are repressed. They're just pushed down. Now, certainly, it is... You know, as a parent and as a psychotherapist, someone who's worked with lots of families and and mothers, routine and structure uh, are very important to help children to self-regulate. I don't mean to talk very clinical, but if you're not familiar with self-regulate, it just means, you know, children need structure so they could calm themselves, so they can also self-soothe. Now... Repression occurs when it's pervasive. Paulit-ulit, it happens often. And the natural instinct of the child must be curbed to meet the demands of the culture or the grown-up. How does this look like in the practical world? You know, if someone, a child is crying, and if the parent is like, ay, nako, tama na yan. <laughs> you know, like, stop crying. If you do this to your child once or twice, maybe because a parent is not perfect, maybe the parent is very stressed at that moment, maybe this may not create any dent to the child's psychological psyche. Maybe, I'm not sure. But if it's pervasive, that's just the language, that's the dialogue. It almost seems like a shadow that follows the child, even without the presence of the parent anymore it's like it's been conditioned no no i i can't cry i have to be strong this is when the natural instinct of the child has to be repressed and for a child to survive interaction with this grown-up it could be the parent the lola or someone else they have to be really savvy in learning new skills that might be survival skills at that moment. But what happens is if you don't shake that off, you don't metabolize that as you're growing up, they become maladaptive. So again, when you were a kid, you were trying to just adapt to the situation, trying to survive, right? Trying not to piss off the adults because they can punish you. You get used to this. This becomes your world. This becomes like... If you imagine someone giving you tinted sunglasses, whatever's the tint, that's how you see the world. So if it's greenish, everything you, you, you see might be greenish. The goal, I hope, is that you see clearly. And I think that's the goal in therapy, is that the meanings that have been passed on to you generationally, you know, oh, it's not okay to cry, for instance, that you will be able to clean the tint, that greenish tint in your eyeglasses so that then you could see clearly, oh, wow, that car actually isn't greenish, but it's actually red. So seeing things as they are. Now, again, I'm going to repeat that we learn certain skills. We don't want to upset our grown-ups, our, our connection, that the fuel our psychological fuel when we were kids and even now as as adults but then as adults you are more free to make decisions but children really are helpless and it's their parents who act on their behalf so you become an expert children become an expert even in reading facial movements is she going to be mad? And so these types of stories are absorbed, not just cognitively, not just in your brain, but really, this is neuroscience, neurobiology to be more specific, the body. So if you've had an experience where, wow, you know, I was in this meeting, I felt really nervous when all I had to do was introduce myself with a bunch of people that are new i haven't it's my first time meeting them it's possible that you know that's just normal 
but it's also possible that there is something in the body that's being triggered based on an experience that have not been metabolized from the past. Now, just underscoring being grateful in the Filipino culture, there is a bypassing that occurs when we as grown-ups do not allow our children to explore, express their emotions based from our own dogmas, whether it's religion, oh, you should just be thankful, you know, just pray. I think those are good. Those are can be helpful, but they're not helpful when it's for the intention of bypassing. So again, two people can always do or seemingly look like they're doing two similar things but what is different is their intention for doing it so if someone is saying oh anak just pray but they have sat beside their child who was crying you see the intention there is for healing but if someone says well just pray about it repressing the emotion because maybe the adult also didn't have models, role models who allow them to express. Now, it becomes the parent becomes agitated because they don't know how to handle it or it's too painful for them to be a witness to their child's sadness. This is the negative part when we say being the extreme. This is the shadow side of being grateful when it's used to almost hide things under the guise of being grateful. And sometimes, for some people, they just maintain this. If you just imagine hiding something in a mount of uh, dirt, and you have to keep maintaining whatever you're trying to hide, when it's the shadow side of being grateful, it's this dirt And you don't want to see what's underneath. But strong winds can happen. Storm can happen. And you have to work so hard to manage this mount so that whatever you're hiding will not be visible. This is when you sense that being grateful is used based on hiding as a guise or based from fear. Now... How do you know if a child or you have repressed emotions? This is not an exhaustible list, but one thing I notice is that when you are consumed with good and bad, right or wrong, this can be a signal when someone has experienced trauma. This makes sense because if you've had a bad experience, you want to categorize the world, good or bad. The brain's job is to pattern match. So it's remembering, it's almost like bookmarking a page in a book so that you remember never to go there again. In that way, this is a relief that your brain is actually working. It's there to protect you. Another thing to be curious about is if you look into others like all the time for answers rather than what is sensing what is intuitively right for you. One of the things that is lost when you anchor your behavior, your response just based on, oh, magagalit ba si mommy? Is mom gonna get mad? You become an expert in reading people's facial movement, sounds, a smirk, but then you become very poor in learning about your own body experience. And so when that happens, you thwart your intuition and you're always looking for others as an adult. It's like, what is somebody doing? Is this the right way? And you might be constantly looking at social media or trying to do so many courses. Now, you could just be lured by, you know, some marketeers. But just be curious about that. The other one is very similar, piggybacking on the last one, is piecing others. You're too willing 
to please. When you have been conditioned that it's all about being grateful and don't for, don't worry about how you're feeling, you bypass that. You are so concerned about that and not concerned about yourself. So you're willing to please others, but you don't know how to please yourself. It might not be a surprise to you that some people actually don't know how to experience pleasure and they may feel actually pleasure in pain or confuse both i will do another episode talking about this topic but because i just want to stay with being grateful and how that could be a shadow side so another one is because you weren't listened to i think i mentioned this you become an expert with reading somebody else's you know bodily movements you know in the filipino culture sensing pakiramdam and if you've been listening i talked about this so much sometimes this is seen as something negative like sensing is basically somebody doesn't want to verbally express and you have to figure it out it could be that that's actually the shadow side of pakiramdam but sensing is is actually beautiful in a sense that it's about attunement you know, it's beautiful because when it's not coming from a place of fear, basically your channels are clear and you're attuned. There's the synchronicity and before somebody might open their mouth, you may know what they need. Not because you can read their mind, but because you have been observing them. So it's the process of attuning. When we return, let's unpack some more the different phases of being grateful so stick around jen kala do you know that you can leave a voicemail to this filipina therapist wherever you're listening go check the show notes there you will find a link that says leave a voicemail leave me a voicemail or an email which all the links are in the show notes and i'll be really so happy to hear from you leave me a comment a feedback or any topic that interests you i hope to hear from you soon salamat by the way if you're interested in reclaiming your inner child i have this course the inner child playground 30 days to restoration at the time of this recording i'm still completing this course but check it out learn more about it hey friends i'm back thank you for sticking around and as you know i i uh, just want to go straight to our topic gratitude is a beautiful practice now there are different phases to you know being grateful one thing is what i want to caution you is you would continue to get advice from people well intentioned or not to be grateful don't don't get mad instead understand that actually being grateful is a good advice there is some research on if you practice being grateful how it makes you feel better like it improves your mood so it's not it's not bogus it's not bad advice it's actually a good advice also people don't know where you are your position in life right and how would they know because you're still at a point where you can't find your center so maybe you're confused you're trying to learn your own story and if you don't know where you live it's almost like imagine if you don't know where you live every house can look like yours while your identified house could you imagine because there's no address there's no number can be squatted by people who don't live there you have given your house key to everyone because to you it's just another key you're still in the journey of finding that key i I say that because people don't know so be kind to people when they say oh you know magpasalamat ka they they don't know your position so another one facing hurts from childhood is not a route actually some people choose to take it takes courage sometimes it could be hurtful many will unconsciously prefer not to see what ought to be seen to heal being grateful serves as a blindfold 
for some people. Magpasalamat na lang. What happens to that is just being grateful with having repressed emotions doesn't do anything as far as transmitting this repressed emotion. If you're a parent, you're repressed, you're if you're a parent, you are just being grateful doesn't do anything as far as transmitting this repressed emotion to your own children or people around you. What you don't heal, you transmit. I want to give credit to the person who said this. I'll just put that in the show notes. I used to work with foster care kids, or even children who were abused by their parents. I see this over and over again. Abused, like neglected physically. They long for their parents. They hope one day they will be seen by their parents. If you have this in your generational story, the maintenance of your parents as, you know, they're, they're the best is a self-protection to continue to idealize the parent who sometimes actually didn't act in the best intent for their children, for your intent. Now, utang laloob can be used as a weapon, especially... If you don't understand the culture, I think some Filipino Americans may have a negative connotation with utang na loob because of the misuse. And because you feel like, well, I don't know enough about the culture, someone uses that as weapon. When actually, truthfully, they don't have enough emotional resources that can happen when people immigrate. And... They have put all their emotional resources in one basket. Basically, in immigration and making sure they have the means to feed their children and now their children owe them. That is not the organic purpose of utang na loob. And you can check that out in the blog. I actually have a, a video that talks about the pre-colonial times. It's just a short video. Actually, people from the Philippines, teachers who teach professionals who are from abroad, have asked me to if it's okay that they share that. So they want these foreign, foreigners in the Philippines to understand that concept. Over this extreme gratefulness can be used as a, a weapon. Another one that I want to say is that healers therapists coaches who embrace this dogma if you just have to be grateful and they can't also stand witness to your pain they actually perpetuate this whole shame of like oh my gosh i feel this way when i should be grateful look for a witness then that can stand the heat they have enough core in them so that they don't make this process of healing about them, but rather simply a witness to you. I know this has been a heavy topic. What, what's on your mind? Share your thoughts with me. Now, just uh, circling back, it's important to talk about then, then what shall you do? I've just mentioned find a witness. It's very important to find a witness, whether it's a therapist or a friend who can witness you, you might be able to find that. I guess as a therapist, I lean on healers who are also practicing, constantly practice practicing healing within their own space. Second, find a self-creative expression that hinges not just on pure language. What I mean by that is there's many things that you can do. You can collage, you can use watercolors, basically an expression where... There aren't words. It's not based on words. And see what you see there. Be a witness to your own story. I've said this, look for a good fit therapist or find a group, specifically like a Filipino group in terms of this topic that can have the, the potential to point out toxicity in the culture, but can also hold the polarities of how beautiful and healing the Filipino culture is. I hope this episode has served you well. Again, this is Rowan signing off. At sa ulitin, bye!